throbbing with energy and fever. The pearl of thongs on the day of Pentecost are vivid and memorable. Reverend Diana Edu uses her skill as a journalist and communicates the deep mysteries unveiled to her on the purpose of Pentecost. This book is the revered word priest on its authority alone. Reverend Diana's strong theology and unquenched spirit are evident even in her writings. Her years of preaching on a secular TV as an evangelist, prophet, and preacher's skilled exegist has persuaded her listeners to a genuine conversion. Experience the power of the scriptures and your divine inheritance of the gift of thongs on the day of Pentecost. Discover why Christ appeared to his disciples and learn how she unveils that where there is no Passover, there cannot be a Pentecost. A book you should keep for a lifetime. Rain down from heaven. Shalom and God richly bless you. Um, this is the seg segment for the continuation for the divine prophecies uh, for the year 2000, prophecies for the year 2015, as God uh, spoke through my mouth, through me. It is divine settlement, divine settlement. But before we go to the word of God, I have a few DVDs. It is an opening. January is an opening. It is a new month, and therefore, we have Christ the door. You remember the teaching January Janus. January was picked from the Roman idol Janus, who was the deity for opening and closing. And because Christ Himself said He is the door, we want to enter through the gates of 2015. We want to make the journey with him and we will finish in Jesus name and continue to the next year. Then I have Your Destiny Maker. It's a timely book for a season like the scholar is showing the um the uh, um gathering of prayer generals that is coming on a, a themed national um prayer breakfast. We're going to have a breakfast prayer. On the 31st of January 2015 at Centro Culturale Villaggio Sereno um, Traverso Dodicesma. And the number is number 58A. It is near the middle school where people used to go to do um, Italian courses, which is near the garden. You just drop the bus 10, take bus 10 from train station or wherever you are in the city, you take it. Bus 10 doesn't stop in train station. You take it um, on the Caval Via Kennedy. You take it from there and then uh, the one that goes to Villaggio Sereno and Poncarale and it will bring you there. Among the generals that will be coming, I mentioned in the first segment, we have Apostle Nana Baini, we have Apostle Shaba, we have we have um, Bishop Eino, Prophetess Lante, um, Don Fabio Curazina, Reverend Father uh, Bernard um, Enchibue Siako, uh, Pastor Eno Kamegadze, uh, Pastor, Pastore e Pastora Piazza, Pastore e Pastora Lafon, uh, Bishop uh, Otio Pagni, and then we have the Priest Generals, Levite Edu Chairman Teng, Minister Ruthie, uh, Loveth Minister Martins and the Kumi Angels. <clears throat> we are going to have also speakers in the third and fourth session that are going to unveil to us developments on the nation of Italy. As you know, by the 31st of January, Italy is going to elect a new president. And we have um, uh, Carlo is showing the prophecies for 2015, which is divine settlement. And I saw, I just saw somewhere here, 
which was talking about, uh, uh, yes, it is Jeremiah, because the prophecy, the scripture for the prophecy is Jeremiah 29. And I saw, he said, and in the time you will call upon me and I will answer you. So it is a seasonal prophecy and the gathering of champions of prayer generals that uh, God has mandated us to come together at Villaggio Sereno to pray for Italy is timely and prophetic. And uh, we got, when I was coming to the TV station, the, the word of God that I had in my spirit, he said, and I'm looking for those who will tremble at my word. So it is a time to tremble. God says, come, let's gather and pray for Italy. You heard last week uh, in the last segment, it said, for the peace, your, your prosperity depends on the prosperity of the land. Your peace depends on the peace of the land. Look at what happened to France. It happened to 12 or 19 people. But it is the whole nation that was raped. The whole nation that was wounded. So you pray for Italy. That is what we are doing. Please join us at Villaggio Sereno uh, uh, um, from 9 to 2 p.m. And as I said, we have... Um, uh, other uh, men uh, uh, that will be coming to unveil a few things on the land to us, like Professor Paolo Nazo, he's in charge of protestantismo in, at Raidue, but he's also uh, a pastor's son and he's a, a protestant and he's also a professor at the Universidad di Sapienza at Roma. Then we have our own Dr. Franco Valenti. And I know the Holy Spirit would make sure he's present. We have Don Fabio Coratina. You all know him. He's always been active and has the interest of uh, not only migrants, but not only Italians, but also migrants in the land. Come, let them unveil to us and let us stand on the word of God and stand in the gap for Italy. Stand in the gap for Italy. God is ready to, to, to stretch forth his hands upon the land and it will take you and my prayer. If you are a pastor, if you are a prayer warrior, if you have, you have the patria, you have Italy in your heart, come and let's pray. Amen. So uh, that was the advent, that was the, for the uh, prayer, national prayer breakfast that is coming on at Villaggio Sereno. And then, as I said, I have these books, Your Destiny Maker, I have the destiny maker, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. God says that I know the plans that I have for you. Destiny maker, get it and know the plans that God has for you. When all looks dim and all looks dreary in a season like this, God says it is the time that his purposes for you are going to be manifested then. I have also Elisa Verga, my secretary's uh, book. She has uh, worked under me for long, and it is in Italian. La Lode Adio come terapia del uomo. They are all not for sale, but for ministerial gifts. It is for your edification. So please call and buy them and be blessed. And I forgot in the first segment, we have the new calendar. My God, I love it so much. The Diane Du Child Foundation calendar. You see the Ghanaian child. These are the children that through God's grace, some Italians and people in the land are, are, are have a long distance adoption. They send money to them every month. It is just 10 euro every month. And the calendar, you see this lovely children. They are waiting for somebody to call them mother and father. And so please, the calendar is also for a ministerial gift. Questa è calendario della adozione a distanza in Ghana. Vedete che bella bambina. Questi sono gli insegnanti che stanno là ad accudire e insegnare i bambini. E, e potete adot adottare uno di questi bambini a soli 10 euro tramite la nostra chiesa, la nostra comunità e diventi una mamma o un papà a distanza. E il calendario non è in vendita, è per qualsiasi dono, è per il ministero affinché possiamo uh, andare avanti con questa 
adozione a distanza amen e calendario 2015 amen chiamate o oh, andate su scriveteci su info chiocciola diana adu.com barra gospel fragrance child foundation please uh, contact us through uh, info at diana edu.com slash gospel fragrance child foundation or just write to us at info at diana edu.com amen amen i believe this time i haven't forgotten anything and it is time to continue with the <coughs> sorry prophetic word that god laid on my heart on the first of january last week we read through jeremiah chapter 29 and i think we arrived in verse 9 verse 7 where god said we should pray for the land wherein we dwell because our prosperity depends on the prosperity of the land that is that you cannot avoid to come to this gathering of prayer army generals and let's lift up italy before god dio benedica italia god bless italy God bless Italy. God bless Italy. I had been waiting on the Lord for long for this word and I was invited to a banquet and I was the, also the guest speaker at the banquet. So, uh, and she is my spiritual daughter and I had been filling her up and been very much involved in this uh, banquet. So we, we went with a few ministers and when we entered the givers. I'm talking about how the prophetic word came. Last week I started releasing to you, but when I was through, I just felt that I had to let you know so that you will hold the prophetic word very much. So when we entered, you know, the place was just full, but they were able to get us a place to sit. And uh, uh, when we sat down, not within 10 minutes time, people, started pulling in like something. So as a mother uh, to, to the organizers, I decided and I told the ministers that were with me that we should leave the space in Ghana. They say, we are from home, so let's leave the space for those that are, are, are visitors in our midst. So we gave our seats, our table to them. Uh, and then... Uh, we recognized that there was no place for us to sit. So one of the ushers, I believe, they, don't, they didn't even know who I was, accompanied us and they took us near the uh, canteen. When we talk about uh, a canteen, it has to do with the, at the place where the cooks were taking care of the food. And immediately uh, we, uh, uh, we touched the seats. We, to sit down, the food started coming on us like something. And uh, one of the caterers came and said, this is not a place we can sit because they need the table and the seats for seven. And so uh, the ministers around me started looking at me and the question they, if they had courage, they would have asked was, Ma, are you sure you are the, uh, among the guest speakers for uh, this evening? But uh, one of them said, my impossible, is it possible that they can get a place for us to sit? And then I remembered her in the scripture, which says that when you go to a place, look for the last place to sit until you are put in a place of honor. It is not easy to organize a program. So when we stood up, the organizers came right at the time and the woman looked at me and, say, and the brother said, here is where she is. And the woman said, I can't believe, did you put the apostle in this place? And she said, please, ma, follow me. And she hurriedly took me to the table where the other uh, men of God were already seated. Actually, there were other men of God that were dispersed in different tables in the room, but they added me to the table of the guest speakers. And where they put me, they were, they, I was behind the speakers, so the sound was coming in my ears. Doom, doom, doom. And I told the ministers with me, I said, I cannot sit in this place. So I moved from that place, and they took me to the opposite uh, table there. 
And then too, when I sat down, the big speakers were there. So it was like a restlessness for, if I'm not exaggerating, within a twinkle of 30 minutes or, yes, yes, let me be brief, 30 minutes, it looked as if I could not get a place to sit. There was no place for me to sit. I had the title as a guest speaker. And if you are a guest speaker, they put you in the place of honor. But they just shifted me from place to place. And my place that was due me was not being given to me. Not because somebody purposed it or they didn't want to. But it was the situation that was creating it. It looked as if they had forgotten about me. And then, so I moved from that place and then I came back to join the other guest speakers because I had to discuss uh, some issues on the program with them. And immediately my seat sat. I mean, I mean immediately I rested in the seat and I said, finally, I'm rested. I heard the word of the Lord come expressly to me. And then he said, tell my people that this is the season of their divine settlement. This is the season that I'm going to settle them. And so when I was called to speak, I, I thought it was for that place, that banquet. And so I said, I recounted and I said, God said, this is the season for settlement. He will settle your case. He will settle your issue. It is no more crying. He's going to wipe away your sorrow and turn all those adversities into your favor. Now, when I went home, the Holy Ghost wouldn't leave me alone. And he kept on speaking to me and speaking to me. And he said, this is the long-awaited word you have been expecting to speak to my people. Tell them it is the time of they are settlement, it is divine settlement. So I started seeking the, the, the scriptures to know the scriptural backings for the word. And that is where I got the first Peter 5.10, which says that after you have suffered a while, God says he's going to restore you. So settlement means to restore. You have a store, it was looted. God says he's going to replace, restore. He's going to do that for you in Jesus' name. And then that is where I saw the scriptures in Matthew. We would be going there. I pray we have time to go to, to, to look at Matthew. Where to, to settle means to take account, recon, reconcile, recon. Just say, it means the time that God is now going to sit down to take into account and draw up, pull up his book and begin to look at the past cases of abuse after abuse, of sorrow upon sorrow, of injustice upon injustice, and then settle you. If it is a court case, God says, he will settle you, my God, in the name of Jesus. And that is where we went to Jeremiah 29, and we, uh, we, we arrived at the verse 7, where God unveiled to us that among his divine settlement, uh, uh, his workings through settling us is that we pray for the peace of the land for when the land prospers when the land is settled we will be settled you have all seen what happened in France uh, and so it is time that we pray for the land when we go to uh, verse 8 I like it he says do not listen to the prophets and diviners who deceive you if anyone if any angel if another comes and tell you so do you believe in the time of crisis you are going to build a house as god said in jeremiah 29 7 you are going to give birth you are going to marry um uh you say get thee behind me satan god says don't listen to them listen to the word of god believe in god and you prosper believe in his prophets and you will be established that is what god is saying amen amen and then in the verse 10 he says this is what the lord says when 70 years are completed for babylon i will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to you so it goes with the word in first peter chapter 
5 verse 10, which says that after a little while you have suffered, God says after you've gone through, you remember the story of Joseph, you remember the story of Hannah, you remember the story of Leah, you remember the story of many women that go through abuse and are abused. God says 2015 is a sign that is going to lift up his mighty hands and break the yoke of slavery. That is the voice of the Lord that I heard. He said, there is the yoke of slavery that has been hanging upon my people for centuries, for ages, from generation unto generation. But there is an appointed time for deliverance. God gave the Israelites 70 years. God says 2015 is your appointed time to come from the prison to the palace in the mighty name of Jesus. Let somebody shout, Amen. I shout, Amen. He says so. God says, this year he will honor every promise he promised you. 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you. It was not because God did not hear you. It was not because the arm of the Lord is short that he cannot say. It is not because the years of the Lord is dumb that he cannot hear. The Bible says, oh God, open your eyes and see. Open your ears and hear. Stretch forth your mighty hands. Yes, Lord, we've heard of your pain. We stand in awe of your wonderful deeds. Renew Renew them in a day. Renew them in a time that you did for Hannah, that you did for Sarah, that you did for Peter, that you did for Joseph, my God, that you did for Nehemiah, that you did for Ezra, that you did for the people of Israel in their captivity when you release them to go back into their land and build back Jerusalem. When you gave favor upon your people in the land where they dwell as foreigners, God did it for Esther. He will do it for you and I in 2015 it is your season of favor in the name of Jesus let somebody shout amen I shout amen he says that he would remember his gracious promises do you remember the word of God in the book of um, the Bible says that King Ahasuerus could not sleep you remember the story in the book of Esther where God had to call the king on rest until the king pulled his books up and then he said read me and when they started reading the name of Mordecai was mentioned and God had planned for the season of restoration of honor for Mordecai and this is what he did that is the same thing God is saying in this season he is going to cause unrest to some kings who are working or who are I uh, uh, have authority over you and he's going to cause them sleepless nights until your name comes upon their book of annals, upon their books and then they would call you for your honor when your name was hidden where your name was thrown away, where your name did not even want it, where men did not even will, will close their ears so that your name would not be mentioned. God did it for Mordecai. It is your season. There are Mordecai that are going to be raised in this season in the name of Jesus. And then he says that, he says, I would fulfill my promise to you for i know the plans that i have for you saith the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you god is not wicked god does not want to hurt you though god does not want you to suffer forever god says that his purposes for you are good and not evil even we that are human when our children the bible says in the book of matthew ask us for bread we will not give us them stones if they ask us for fish we will not give them serpents how much more the creator the one who sat thought about the years that we are going to spend on on earth for us and update the one who can count every hair on our head how much more don't we expect good from him bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above god is the giver of all good graces God is good. You say all the time. And I say all the time. Then you say my God is good. It is the season of na double double. Na double double. It is a good year. My husband was telling me that it is even the year of um, jubilee. Restoration. When I was telling him the prophetic word that God has given me, he said, yes, because 15, 2015 is the season of jubilee. Restoration. Whatever was taken from you, God is going to restore 
for you in the name. My God, I cannot believe they say that my time is up. God says that you will call on me. Come and pray and I will listen. It is the time to quicken what God has promised you through prayer. It's not the time to sleep when it is time for prayer meeting. He says you will seek me and find me. You see the prophetic word. So this gathering of army, it has to do with God because it's the season of prayer. He says, I will bring you back from captivity. You see, I said, he said, the yoke of slavery is upon the land. But in this season, through our prayer, he will break it. Hallelujah. He says, I will come and do what? Release you from your captivity. I will gather you from all nations where I have banished you. And I'll bring you back to the place where I carried you in exile. My God. What a beautiful prophecy for 2015 in the book of Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 20, chapter 18, verse 22. Jesus says, uh, Peter say, uh, Jesus says, Jesus answered them and says, from the verse 23, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a human king who wished to settle accounts with his attendants. <laughs> you see, the king in the book of Esther that God quickened to settle the accounts of Mordecai from him for all the wrongs that Haman had wronged and was planning to wrong. God's divine and timely intervention came in and settled the account for Mordecai. When somebody had, had planned and constructed a place where he would be hanged on the gallows, God caused the enemy, the adversary himself, to be hanged. And the purposes of the enemy and the adversary was aborted. This is God's plan for you. In 2015, every plan of the enemy, every uh, construction, every pole assigned for your death, for your dishonor, for your shame, for your pain, God is going to cause the enemy himself, the adversary himself, to his leg to fall in his own pit. Because God says, and a human king, the kingdom of heaven, 2015, the year proclaimed by God for his jubilee for his children, will be like a human king, whether it is your boss, whether it is your husband, whether it is your pastor, whether it is the government, to do what? To settle you in the name of Jesus. Wherever perjury, injury, wherever you've been injured, God will settle you. Jesus says that he wished to settle accounts with his attendants. And he began the accountant. One brought him thousand dollars. My God. God. Put that in my bosom for me in the name of Jesus. $10,000. And this man could not pay his master. So God ordered him to be sold. <laughs> I pity those that caused you injury. Because if God starts to take account, they cannot restore. And if they don't restore, it is eternal banishment. It is eternal imprisonment. Divine and spiritual imprisonment for them. My time is up, but the Bible is in your house. Take it and go through Matthew chapter 18 from verse 23 to the end. And hold on on the promises. Believe in the word of God and you will prosper. Believe in his prophets. And your prosperity will be unshakable unmovable. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May favor be your portion in this year. This is your divine time for settlement. It is your season for divine settlement. I'm on Facebook. You'll find me there. Uh, this prophetess, Dr. Diana. And 
we are also the Diana Edu Ministries and Missions. Our website is www.dianaedu.com. You can write me on info at dianaedu.com. I'm there everywhere on Twitter, on hashtag, on uh, everywhere. You'll find me there. I'll be there for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye.